It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. More recently, I went to see the new Godzilla movie last week on a Thursday with a really packed theater. It was amazing. I really enjoyed the movie. I've been a Godzilla fan for a really long time. I started to get into the franchise back in 2004, where basically the first ever Godzilla movie that I've seen was Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. And after I saw that movie, I continued to be into the franchise, collect all the movies on Blu-ray and DVD. And of course, I saw the 2014 Godzilla movie in this theater. I saw Shin Godzilla in this theater with the subtitles. And of course, I seen this one. And hopefully in the future, for King Kong vs. Godzilla, I'll see the movie by then in this theater by March of next year. So, the main criticism that the new Godzilla movie have received from many critics is that basically the franchise, not just the franchise, but the movie, focused too much on monster fights and less on the human aspect. Now, this criticism is absurd because basically the whole purpose of the kaiju subgenre is that they focus more on monster fights and less on the human element. Prior to, of course, this movie, basically for the human element, there was movies like the first one back in 1954 where they had a focus on the human element and the monster. And of course, for the 1984 film, which is The Return of Godzilla, what happened is that they focus on the nuclear weapon steam, and also for Shin Godzilla, they focus on the tragedy that happened in Japan with the whole entire, I think, what was it, hurricane or tsunami. So basically, after the first movie, the sequel started to gain more attention, they started to have more monster fights, and so gradually over time, a lot of the elements that we know in the franchise, they develop as monster versus monster, and less focus on the human element. So basically, the majority of people, myself included, who watch these monster movies, we watch these movies not for some sort of intelligent story, but rather to see how the monster fights are, are about. And it's, it's perfectly fine to watch, you know, Godzilla movies with a message. Like I know for a fact that the 1954 movie, back in, 19, yeah, of course, 1954, they had like this message of basically the anti nuclear bomb stuff. Of course, Shin Godzilla is about like the corrupt politicians. And of course, like I said before, 1950, not 1954, but 1989, not 89, 1984 Godzilla had this message against like nuclear, um, the nuclear crisis for Cuba and of course the United States. So basically, you cannot really come into these movies expecting some sort of deep political message. You should come into these movies with an open mind to watch about like the monster fights and just enjoy it for what it is, which is mindless entertainment. It's perfectly fine to criticize, you know, aspects of the movies that you do not like, but to complain that a monster movie has too much monster fights kind of oversimplifies the genre. I know for a fact that when people, you know, criticize, like, superhero movies, they never say, like, there's too much superhero fights in a superhero movie, Mostly because when you watch like a superhero movie, you expect superhero fights. And so why is it not the same for Godzilla movies? Why do people criticize like the Godzilla movies for having too much fights when superhero movies and other movies also kind of have too much fights if you really think about it? So basically, you need to criticize a movie, not because it's too much fights or, you know, not enough fights. Like, you need to criticize the movie for its merits. If it's good, if it's bad, if it's okay, if it's not okay. Obviously, like, not every single Godzilla movie have good criticism. Like, the most infamous, like, movie in the franchise, obviously, is, like, of course, Godzilla vs. Megalong. It was trashed by the critics. Not trashed by the critics. It was trashed by the audience. But also, you know, praised by the critics. So, obviously, like... Godzilla has a long history of, you know, having bad reputation for, like, the critics. Well, basically, these movies obviously are panning towards, like, the Godzilla fans. And so, basically, you cannot really trust critics. 
because critics nowadays, they seem to have a bias against like any kind of thing that does not have a political message. I know for a fact that outside of the Marvel movies, there is some sort of, you know, bias against movies that are not, you know, political. Like Alita Battle Angel, for example, it was released not so long ago, however, it got trashed by the critics for being too sexy. Of course, there was also the whole entire drama with Star Wars The Last Jedi, and of course, that was not trashed by the critics, but trashed by the audience. And also, the Venom movie I saw, like, basically, it was trashed by the critics, but loved by the fans. So obviously, you need to trust your own judgment for movies, don't trust the critics, because ultimately, like, basically, sometimes critics could be wrong, and I'd rather trust the judgment of a person who is familiar with the franchise than some sort of critics who try to make movies for political reasons. What is also very bizarre about the criticism of this movie is the fact that Pacific Rim was highly praised and it also had a lot of monster fights throughout the whole entire movie, yet for some reason there was no criticism of it having too much monster fights in the movie. There was also King Kong Skull Island. That was also praised by critics and by audience, but there was no complaints about the lack of, of course, human drama and the action in the movie. So it's kind of almost like they have some sort of bias somehow against, I guess, Godzilla compared to these other movies that I mentioned just right now. Anyway, what you guys thought, tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys next time.